Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome back to the glorious Blood Citadel. In today's episode, we are going to be continuing our campaign against the Grey Talons, hopefully gaining some more land, and possibly taking out one of their resource zones. If we can fight our way to the first resource zone, I will consider today a huge success, and since we are getting so many resources per second right now, I will be probably creating a second Bloodthirster and a lot of the hover tanks and the submarines. Hopefully, with all of this force, we can actually have a few good battles. I am still very nervous about the Grey Talons. We have only seen the Thunderclap, I believe it was called so far, but that is not even in the list of the crafts I'm actually completely terrified of. Don't get me wrong though, really awesome craft, really hard to kill, but there are far more scarier things on the horizon. So with that, let's go ahead now let's go back to war. So this is the first resource zone, or at least I think it is. It's not actually being harvested from, but it's definitely in a Grey Talons tile. So I can only imagine that does count towards their economy, I think. So I will be trying to go for that. So how about we go towards the east so that we can set up one of our satellites around here and then we go down. So right and then down rather than down and then right. I think that would make a lot more sense. So the Bloodthirster is already ready. We have the perforator here ready to be repaired so that we can send that as a bit of a suicide attack somewhat soon. We have both of the ammo barrels which are... They're, they are pretty good for their cost. They won't hold up against any of the enemy vehicles, but they will be able to do quite a bit of damage before they die. And then, of course, we do have our two hover tanks. I think we have probably just about enough to make one more attack. Yeah, I think that would be the best thing to do. Am I not harvesting from here? Really? Blood altar. Move a tiny bit towards the north. There you go. One more resource zone for us. That will be pretty darn helpful. Thank you. The torpedoes have now been replaced with missiles on the tanks. I did this in the previous video for one of our tanks, however, it's now in the official design, which means whilst we're fighting against the Grey Talons, a completely airborne enemy, the missile launchers will actually have some effect. In addition to this, I have changed the shell type on our lovely cannons, which means the shells are a little bit slower, but they do a little bit more damage. The reason for this is because shields are more effective against faster shells than they are against slower shells, so slower shells have a much higher chance of getting through a shield than a faster moving shell, so hopefully it will make them a little bit more reliable. But actually, in the last video, the shells were doing pretty well, so I'm hoping with this slight adjustment, the tanks will become something of a nuisance towards the enemy. So well done, little tank. You're cheap and you're cheerful. And you're staying in place so eerily still. I do love PID systems, but sometimes I am tempted to make them weaker just to make it rock a little bit, because this is weird. Barrels tend to have the most interesting visual glitches. Okay, what I'm going to do is sacrifice the judgement so that the perforator can be fixed pretty much instantly. So we are sacrificing one white flyer to the blood god, so that another white flyer can serve us. I like that, that sounds good, that sounds like something which we should definitely be doing. So goodbye to the judgement, and hello to the perforator. Come on, please have a nerf. The perforator is very expensive, but there we go. Fully healed up. Excellent. Don't know why the camera was doing that then. It just kind of was. There we are. So, I've never really been able to have a good look-see at this craft since I've not really spawned it, spawned it in into the sandbox mode yet. Apparently, it's a bit too early to be recording because words are hard and stuff. Ooh, my little throne room. Can't really see outside, but loving the red glow of the blood god in here. 
We have a load of smoke dispensers. I did notice that the first time we fought it. There's so many surge protectors. This thing does not want to be EMP'd at all. We have the main gun, of course, which is this bugger. So it's a 225. Uh, how long are the shells exactly? They're 225 millimeter width, and they are. That is regular auto loaders. Let's have a quick look, see. No, they are two meter auto loaders. Okay. I've just realized how much this thing actually costs to run, both in the ammo processors and in the fuel cost. This is with all the shields offline, and it's still incredibly expensive. And it's likely going to take a little while as well for all these guns to fully reload. Yeah, I can't see myself using this as a standard vehicle. I think what I'll have to do is the same treatment as the word bearer, which I need to spawn back in as well. Make it all nice and chaosy, but also sort of downgrade it. It's really sad to say, but it won't be an upgrade job. It'll definitely be a downgrade job, so it's less expensive per battle. Because right now I just can't use this on a regular basis. Although I do really want to see it fighting against the Grey Talons though. One of the strongest godly designs of the White Flayers put to work against the Grey Talons. Now that is what I wanted to see. A strength 111 protecting 250,000 worth of resource in this resource zone. That is our new goal. This one is nothing in comparison. It's only 24,000 resources. I want that. So we're going to go straight east and then straight north. We can go for that next time, or if we have enough time in the video, go for that nearer to the end. But if we get that resource zone, we are in such a good position. That can literally give us a bloodthirster. Well, I wasn't paying attention, and we are under attack by an achievement, apparently. I don't know where this came from. I, I was literally over here with my screen and then out of nowhere you are under attack i'm guessing it got reinforced and then moved upwards i don't really know oh and it's attacking our little hovers um guys perforator yeah you go in there and prove yourself against a single enemy i think that would be the best here should get close enough before the battle there we go okay so remove you so, Perforator versus the Achievement. Now, honestly speaking, the Perforator should win. It's a larger vehicle and it's a more expensive vehicle. If it loses, I will be really disappointed. So, let's have a quick look-see, though, at the Achievement before the battle starts off properly. You're kind of in the water there, mate. Hopefully you haven't got thrusters to move upwards. Are you using internal rotors? I'm going to guess yes, since I can't see anything on the outside. Yep, definitely internal rotors, that's absolutely fine. So that's going to get up in the air in no time. Oh, I love how they've done these. So for those who don't know, these are actually... Well, the top there is definitely cram cannon. Essentially, these are cannon pieces. And there's the firing piece, I think. Is this using a firing piece to increase the gauge? And they're using those as fake exhausts. Oh, that's a really neat idea. Pat yourself on the back, designer. Once again, using barrels and such here on the top. That is really nice looking. I love the front as well, the like sort of ram. I've tried to do that in the past and failed horribly. Okay, it's got a small advanced cannon firing against us and here comes our return fire. The shields are doing a very, very good job at blocking most of the shells. It does seem to have an anti-missile system on there. Well, anti-munition. Oh man, the sheer firepower of the, of the Perforator. Yeah, the Perforator can take out the blood letter fairly reliably, so I'm not too surprised here. Had a bit of trouble tracking it then, but still... Yeah, all of the main guns are gone. It looks like the achievement is pretty much down. The missiles are now being released. And turn off and just save ammo. Just let the missiles do their work. Okay, Perforator, you did your thing. What a pretty craft. 
That wasn't a very large force though, so this only counts as something like 30 or so, so the perforator counts as something like 60 in terms of force count. So once again, it was an expected victory really. So well done White Flyers. The perforator, still in my top 10 of all time favourite crafts. At some point I, I need to make a video where I just literally showcase my top 10 favourite campaign craft. It's finally time to spawn in a couple of our new subs, able to create nukes from the corpses of our enemies. Here we go versus the first proper tile today. So, what do we have against us after I spawn in all of the forces I actually want to spawn in? There we go. Perforator, please go to the end with the Bloodthirster. So against us, we have the SRF. We have the Great Axe, we have the Lamprey, we have the Lamprey, and once again we just have the Great Axe. Okay, so I have no idea what the Lamprey actually is. A lot of smaller craft actually on their team. Very low volume, this is a little bit of a concern. Because I do want it to be fair, in that I don't want to spawn in all of my forces and make it so they can't spawn in the majority of theirs. So let's take away the Perforator, and... I don't want to take away the blood letter, sorry, the bloodthirster, but why are we up against so few volume? So little volume. Maybe some of them have multiples? This seems very odd. I'm definitely godly. Okay, I mean... Let's just go, we can spawn in all of our forces straight away, which I think is really unfair, but I'm not going to just bring in nothing. I'm already preventing the subs and the Listening. perforator, so Listening. I guess let's just find out what happens. Hello, Bloodthirster. Everyone online? Taking control. Control. Pause time. So this says strength 150 tile. Oh my god, look at that little thing! What was this one called again? Ahem, camera. Do what I want you to do, thank you. The SRF, was it? It's just a, a pair of floating cram cannons. That's adorable. These are the lampreys. Once again, just a bundle of guns, probably very highly explosive. Ooh, wow, look at that. Really awesome designs on them, but so small. The lasers just shredding them because they're so small, they have very little defenses. There we go, shells coming in from the hovers as well, doing quite a bit of damage. Two of the enemy craft are already AI dead, I, I believe they were the lampreys. Shells narrowly missing after it got nudged to the side, which is actually very, very irritating. Missiles there from the subs. Okay, um... I think this is almost done. And there we go, the first few nukes being created by the soul cages. Will the nukes even reach their target? On the upside, we can simply scrap them if they don't actually activate. Oh, and can we get at least one? There we go. Nuclear explosions. The power of the nucleus. That was a very odd battle, I've got to say. On the upside, if you look now, the... The lovely Scarlet Dawn is now becoming friendly with me because of this war. Okay, let's keep on moving. I really want to see the extinction, if nothing else. 
Okay, that's more like it. The exact same strength tile, but this time the enemy actually has a slight advantage on us in terms of force count. So that's exactly what I wanted to see. That's the reason why I didn't bring in the ammo barrels or the perforator, so that the battles could spawn in both sides in a more reliable manner. Either way, though, against us we have the monsoon, the monsoon, the iron gate, the kite fighter and the Kobold. Now I believe the Kobold is the vehicle with the really ridiculous front-facing advanced cannons, which basically unleashes ship-killing hell in a short burst and then simply reloads. It's one of the few vehicles I actually know of before going into the war about the Grey Talons, so that's interesting to me. So to begin with, we are just going to have our cheapo vehicles hopefully weakening the enemy, maybe getting through a couple, maybe one of the smaller vehicles, and then the Bloodthirster will be spawned in at the end. That's the goal. What I'm really wanting to see is a Kobold versus Bloodthirster 1 versus 1. I do think the Bloodthirster may win, but it depends on one thing. Does the Kobold have laser defenses? Because even though I do have the Wavefront Adjuster on my lasers, which means some damage goes through smoke at the cost of just base damage, it's really slow, so if they do have defences, it means it strips the Bloodthirster from its first hit sort of bonus. That's its main advantage in a battle. After that, the advanced cannons, of course, are still very powerful on, on the Bloodthirster, but then it's a matter of can those destroy the Kobold before all hell is unleashed. Let's wait until it's a little bit brighter, and then begin the battle. And so the battle begins! Okay, what are you and what are you firing at? Hello there, Craft. Is that a kite? <laughs> okay, there appears to be a kite for some reason. I have no idea what's going on there. But what? That's the Kobold! No, that's the Iron Gate. Okay, I'm glad that's not the Kobold. Ooh. Oh, that is going to sting so bad. Oh, please miss. Thank you. Thank you so much for missing. Missile. Oh, so much EMP. And we have been shut down. Okay, that didn't go so well. Although, the enemy is AI dead after being hit by one of the nukes. My god, that must have been the most well-placed nuke in existence. Look at that hit. Oh my god. Oh lord. I can't believe I missed that. It must have hit straight where the AI was. No funny business, just that is where I'm going to hit. Well done, Soul Cages, spawning that in. That was insane. The missiles there being countered by the Monsoon, but thankfully they are frag. Oh. Okay, one of the hovers has been sunk. The Monsoon is beating up one of our hovers. It's still trying to fire, bless it, but it seems like its detection systems are royally messed up. Incoming nuke from the soul cage! Changing targets. Must have been AI dead. Monsoon, are you going down? Don't know why, but it changed targets anyway. And a giant explosion over there on the last of the monsoons, I believe. Wow, the... The Soul Cage is doing so much better than expected. Managing to dodge almost all of the damage and then just unleash absolute hell. Cheesy sweet hell. You look a bit damaged there, Nuke. Are you a bit hurt? You look a bit hurt, buddy. Try again. There we go. Nudging it out of the way before the other one can hit it. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe I should stop bringing Nukes. Still very fun to watch, though. What are you firing at now? Oh yeah, that weird kite thing. What is that? Actually, what is this? This little thing here. It was tiny. I do not know what you are. You're adorable. No idea what you were though. The nuke has no target, so it's just kind of sitting there now, waiting. And the kobold has spawned in right next to a nuke who is already primed. Oh, there goes the shots. You're firing at a nuke. What a waste of those shots. A nuke going off in the center of the kobold. 
Shells raining down like confetti. Cheapo forces. Y you might be proud. All of you have hovers, nukes, soul cages. More mainframes for the soul cages, I suppose. Oh, stop! No, uh, wait, 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 wait. Pause. 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 Kobold is about to die, and it's AI dead. Where are we? Well, that's good. I like being upside down. Ah, crud. The problem here is, of course, is it's no longer going to track it. Uh, okay, let's get off. Come on, let's go flippity flippy. Come on, Kobold, come to me. Come to Daddy. Here, Kobold. Hello, Kobold. Welcome to the Legion. Arise from the depths. Okay, so, um, oh, comments. I've only now just realized the problem here. And it's not really a problem unless you're trying to make YouTube videos and make it interesting and make fights fun. But the soul cages are subs. And the issue is the enemy can't detect them correctly. They simply can't. So all that happens is the soul cages get to about 30 below sea level. And then they're just invisible. They're almost invisible. When the turrets were trying to fire at them from the one monsoon, it was going all over the place. It didn't have a chance. The hovers are so quick and so unstable, they're becoming issues for the tracking of the enemies as well. That's why they were so good at avoiding those shots. They only got hit a few times. I've lost one of the tanks. That's not fun, though. I didn't mean it to be like That's not fun. It's silly, and it's just countering. It's not better design. It's not anything to take credit for. It's just hard countering, which I'm not a fan of. I hate that. So maybe next time I'll just bring in the Bloodthirster and try to fight something large like this. Oh, look, it's a little CT. That's cute. So how do these guns work, then? Let's have a look-see. So, my god, how long is this barrel? Oh my god, this whole thing is a gun. The whole side is a gun. It goes all the way back to there. Okay, I see why it's so powerful then. Almost all the cost of this thing is just two giant advanced cannons. Oh, it's four advanced cannons. I thought it was just two. Oh. Still freaking huge. It's got custom jets here? Why? Okay, it's really hard to tell until this thing's repaired. So for now, the Cobalt is going to go night night. I'm just going to move it away. Also, how many nukes did my um, soul cages just have active? Yep. Yep. Once again, we have been attacked from behind. Okay, so I've got two theories right now. Theory number one, their main base is somewhere over here, which would make sense considering the Scarlet Dawn has to take up this space up here anyway. But my second theory is maybe similar to the Deepwater Guard. Perhaps they have multiple bases for creating forces. Now against us, we have the Great Axe and we have something tiny. The SRF again, that little cram cannon craft. Let's see, where's the craft I want to spawn in? Not you, Perforator. Bloodthirster, let's do Bloodthirster versus those. I feel like I just haven't used the Bloodthirster that much in this um, series of battles. Well, here we are and straight away... Yep, that looks pretty darn painful. Uh, quickly checking. Let's just make sure we still have godly... Yeah, we're still having godly designs. Also, actually, while I'm doing all menu stuff... Where are you? I want to remove some Stormtrooper and put them back into Brawler. Okay, so that is the Great Axe, I believe, and the other one is the SRF, though I can't seem to see where it actually is. They're both there. Oh, hello! I can't even remember doing that. Why did you suddenly start missing everything, buddy? And cruise missiles to the face. The Great Axe can actually take a little bit of a beating. Surprise! Oh, does it have smoke? Those lasers seem to be doing very little, actually. 
I don't know what's going on there. Although, we have just lost a weapon thanks to the Great Axe. Apparently, the single Great Axe is significantly stronger than all of the rest. There we go. Now we're doing damage. Yeah, it must have been smoke or something. I didn't realize that the first time. Is the other guy still alive anywhere? Uh, no, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, the Great Axe is dead. And we lost a weapon. That's really annoying. Hello, okay, there's a force coming from over here, so there's definitely some sort of base in this section, so that's where we should go after taking the resource zone. This little force happens to have the pike and the odyssey. Okay, that's annoying. Uh, perforator, where are you, buddy? Can you please go backwards and defend my balloon? The traitor perforator versus the odyssey, which is very expensive, and the pike. Hopefully this will go as well as the last few fights when using the perforator. Okay, missiles already being released. Let's see which enemies are these then. Ahem. Camera, thank you. So that is the Odyssey itself, and it's a mothership by the looks of things. Creating... Oh, Oh my god, that's so cute! Oh my god, that is so ridiculous! Ridiculously adorable. Best Craft 2017. Oh my god, Odyssey, you have the cutest little drones I've ever seen. Oh, and they're like, baby, you. Oh, that's so sweet. Missile's not quite in range. I'm a little bit surprised there, honestly. Perforator. You're not doing the whole aiming thing too well, and I just got hit in the face. Which is annoying, considering I am actually inside of the craft. Or at least was. So much for Brawler. On the upside, with Brawler, I did heal up fairly quickly. Oh dear lord. Okay, I'm just going to jump off, aren't I? Great recording here. Able to see so much going on. There we go, yep, just go into the water. Again, thankfully with Brawler, instantly full health. So, <laughs> continue the fight. Missiles going everywhere. The Odyssey is holding up to damage really well, actually. Oh, that's what... Wow, there's a strong shield. Look at that. Almost no shots actually getting through that shield. Behold the weakness of pure kinetic, I suppose. Oh, a lot of damage being done there. And the enemy has rammed us. Are you meant to be a ramming vehicle? You don't look like one. You have no rams or anything. The main gun on the perforator has been destroyed? Odyssey, you beast! So far, the longest battle in this series of fights. Definitely damaged the missile systems, because those are going nowhere. Still fighting, though. The Perforator is proving to be a really annoying vehicle to fight. Taking out one of the Odyssey's guns. The Odyssey's weapons are definitely lowered now. One of the small vehicles is now AI dead. Look at that. That's so weird. I think the Perforator is going to win, but barely. Which is weird, considering the cost difference. The Perforator is by far the more expensive. Oh, the pike has just spawned in. I completely forgot about that. Uh, how about you fight this guy? I really need to use this mode more to do things like that, by the way, on a side note. There we go. The little guy just took a fair bit of damage. But only the back gun is currently functioning on the perforator. Again, shielding is just completely countering all of this. Okay, a large chunk just came out of the little baby. I kind of want to capture it. I don't care. I'm capturing it. I'm going against my rules here since it's not all down and out. Oh, no, it is down and out. No. No. <laughs> I want the baby. Oh, I could have been the best mummy. Okay, keep fighting. I'll just go to the bottom of the ocean again. Now fighting against the pike, which seems to have instantly flipped. Not quite sure what's going on there. 
So, how you doing, Pike? You're looking a bit off, got to be honest. There you go, flattening back up, and it was a trick the entire time. Ha <laughs> ha! You were fooled. Serious lag. Something just happened. Oh, Lord. It happened on the perforator. The la- Okay, the Odyssey's actually still alive. I thought it was completely dead. Obviously not. Incoming cram shells. Oh, please don't hit the only functioning guns. Oh, it does have the two front guns as well. I was very much mistaken from earlier. The lag as well is seriously real. Little bits of damage being done here and there. It really is up to the perforator to be as tanky as it has been in the past. Oh, with shells like that hitting it. How's the Odyssey doing? One second, I'm going to quickly check the Odyssey to see if it's capturable without feeling bad. No, it's not. It's still floating. It still has a lot of stuff going on. No guns, though? Uh, seems like it's got one side gun. Yeah, I'd feel bad capturing that still right now. But I might do anyway, because anyway, that battle's taking forever. Seems like one of the perforator's guns is now focusing on the Odyssey. Does that mean it's... Okay, what does that mean? Let's have a quick look-see then. Does that mean it's really badly damaged the pike? Before we get there. No, the pike is still in the air. It's still fighting it off, but... Oh, the pike has lost something. Look at that. It's lost kind of the front chunk. Okay, for a second there, I thought the back didn't exist. Um, yeah, lost a fair bit of health, so it is definitely weakened. Anyway, those are the back guns, so it's not like they can turn forwards anyway. Let's just jump on here so we are actually on here, in case the AI does get knocked off. Once again, a large explosion there. It seems like the perforator has been hit again in one of the guns, one of the back guns this time. Definitely proving to be one of the longest battles so far. Now let's find out where the AI is on this thing. Uh, it's at the front somewhere. So sadly, before I really got a chance to, the ship simply detonated. It was classed as too damaged. I didn't notice. I paused time to try and find the AI. It fast forwarded the destruction. The end. How's this going over here? Not path view. Binoculars, please. Thank you. Oh, I can't see the perforator winning this. Only one gun still functioning. It's barely even going on on the correct target. Its detection systems must be absolutely eradicated. I think the pike will have the victory here. Yeah, I think the humane thing to do here would be to simply destroy the perforator, but it's still firing a single cannon. I would feel so bad if I just didn't let it fight its last little dying breath. On the upside, I think I've figured out how they do this weird pattern. It's using rotors to go backwards and forwards, and it's using a control block, I think, to change either the speed or the... Oh dear, it's dead. Yep, either the speed or the motor drive. There is also one other thing where you basically can change the settings, so compared to other movement types, how much engine power is that thing getting, and you can set it to zero. I've just simply forgot what that's called, but it seems like that's how this functions. Well, well done to the enemy. The perforator is dead. That's 300,000 materials destroyed. I will end battle. And blood has been spilled for the blood god this day. Okay, so where are you, my lovely, lovely bloodthirster? Get your ass over there. The pike was already very badly damaged, so let's see how long it can last against the onslaught of the bloodthirster. Seems to be sort of flying backwards, actually. It does have protection against lasers, which is very, very annoying. And it's moving in such a weird way, the cannons simply didn't track it. But here come the missiles. Now the lasers are indeed getting through, and some major damage has been done. Seems like most of its weapons are currently offline. Bloodthirst is doing just fine. Health-wise, the Bloodthirster is still on 99%. Can you please hit this thing? Thank you. Two damage, there we go. 
And the pike is no more. Rebel shells. Hello there, we can see the Grey Talon Fortress. Okay, we really need to take one of these resource zones as soon as possible because that is very quickly stacking up in power. That's why we've been attacked so many times and it's definitely weathering on our resources. Did I really get 170,000 resource back from the perforator? That's like 50%. I've never really looked at that before, the stuff we lose during a battle from damage. Okay, uh, can someone just run over there please and grab that for me? That would be really, really helpful. Either way though, let's get all of our lovely forces sorted. We're going to be sending in the Hovers and also the Bloodthirster against this resource zone. Moving out. Against us we have the Lazarus. The Flyle and the Mosquito. On our side, we are taking three of our cheapo hovers, and we are taking in the Bloodthirster. After this video, I will be finally naming the hovers, so any final suggestions would be very much appreciated. Okay. If we get lucky, maybe the hovers will beat the Flyle and the Mosquito, since both of them are quite small and quite cheap themselves, and then perhaps weaken up the Lazarus a little bit. Although its volume isn't too big, its cost is incredibly high, at 406,000. So I'm thinking maybe a mothership, or maybe... I don't know really, what's so expensive to be 406,000 with only 15,000 volume? Particle cannons, maybe? I can't quite remember their cost. It's been a while since I've used them. Okay, so there's the little mosquito at the back, and there's the- Oh, I remember you from one of our first fights! The little drone things with the cram cannons. Okay, the shells are doing very, very well against them. Incoming the missiles, both hitting the mosquito. And down it goes. Okay, that was very effective, although a lot of lag indicating something big and bad has spawned in. Oh my god, Lazarus. Yeah. The Lazarus is a flying aircraft carrier. That is really freaking cool. Do you have any guns yourself? It looks like two massive cram cannons. Anything else? Uh, doesn't look like it. Uh, cram cannons at the back as well, so four cram cannons in total. Any anti-air stuff? Don't know. Anyway, continue the fight. Oh, the Bloodthirster has spawned in. The laser, thankfully, is set, so it goes for smaller targets first. Which is really, really good for us. The Hovers are trying their best to take out the Lazarus main vehicle. The laser is taking out the smaller flyers and incoming the shells against the Lazarus itself. Thankfully, a very slow-moving craft, so the Bloodthirster is able to unleash its full volley against it, hitting pretty much every shot. The hovers are still doing great as well. One of the one of the planes, though, is getting scarily close, so... Change target, please. Take that out before it does get over you. Maybe. Nope, doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Still need to use the tactical menu a bit more often. Okay, swapping targets again, please. I will, I will use the tactical menu off camera. In fact, no, let's do it now. Let's do it now, shall we? See this bugger? Yeah, I would like you to focus on him, please. Okay, my tank is getting really close, so let's jump over to there. Let's jump off as soon as possible, thank you very much, and let's get on board the Lazarus. Today will be a great day of capturing if we do manage to capture this behemoth. Lots of explosions going on in the background there. Whoa, some serious lag actually. Let's just pause the game for a second let things vanish. Hello there! Oh dear! Okay, everything stop. I did not realise the Lazarus was so badly damaged. Oh no, it's already classed as too damaged! I can't pause time anymore because if I do, it will undo everything. Oh, it got blew up too quickly. Gosh darn it, Bloodthirster. Yeah, if I pause time, now what happens is the two damage continues to go forwards and, well, it all sort of just detonates instantly. So I've got to look for the AI in a few seconds and that's not going to happen. Yeah. I am a terrible pirate. Still, got a lot of resources from that. And so we now have that resource zone. It wasn't actually being harvested by the enemy, so... 
Does it still count? Great talons. Yes, it does. That is its economy damaged. Okay. Well done to the hover tanks again, though. Seriously, I'm so proud of you little guys. Kinetic damage is actually pretty good when you use slower shells. Who would have thought? Repair work now being done on the Bloodthirster. Apparently, the Bloodthirster actually lost 12% of its health near the end in the last battle. It just managed to stay up in the air. It's now healed up back to 99%, and now it's making the next Blood Altar. There we go, Blood Altar online. Let's put that in the resource zone. And there we go. That's 200,000 worth of material we will get over the next maybe 10 or so minutes. Okay, Bloodthirster, you move out again. Uh, you're about to grab all those resources, which are a lot of resources. I think we should repair the Kobold. The Kobold is now fully repaired and ready to serve our lovely little legion. Although, for some reason, it doesn't actually have connection at the top here. Oh, this isn't going to look as good. But, I do like that flag. There we go, the Kobold is now fully converted to the true Legion, the Blood Guard. So these two barrels are 500, these two top ones are 250, okay. There's a lot I can learn from dissecting this thing, and I'm sure the mainframes now under our control are completely okay with that. Although I do need to now decorate this with a little bit of, you know, mainframes here and there, bit of fire, bit of red paint. It'll be beautiful. And with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's episode. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we will hopefully be taking out the Grey Talon's main base, and then moving on to yet another faction. Although, I do still need to figure out if there are other bases creating forces for the Great Talons, similar to the Deepwater Guard. I really think this is a big possibility, especially since the Great Talons have a big deal about there being multiple clans. They are all air tribes? I can't remember the exact name they give them, but there are multiple of them, and each of them makes a distinct type of vehicle, so you will see different styles. I'm also really hoping we get to see some of the really, really brutal forces from the Grey Talons. Things like the Extinction and the Warlord. And sadly, with this Kobold, it was just so unfair. The fact it spawned in the water... I'm still annoyed by that, because I know for a fact this thing could easily brutalize the Bloodthirster if it gets that nasty shot off. That volley is just absolutely devastating. Thankfully though, so far, with our laser system, we have been able to take out most of the enemies with... Not ease, but we have been able to counter them, which I'm not always too happy with. Thankfully, some of them did have laser defenses, and the ones with smoke dispensers and the laser-resistant shields, they were actually very difficult for the Bloodthirster to deal with. Everything else has crumbled, so I do sort of think that I won't make a pure laser vehicle in the future, as it seems to be a bit too strong. I'm also considering changing the subs for something else, at least against the Grey Talons. Anyway, that was a bit of a long ramble at the end. It's all about balance. From the Depths is a game where balance will never be truly struck, but I do try to keep things interesting, but it can be difficult. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.